the fuck is going on with Dolph, baby? What is going on with Black Youngster? What is going on, man? I know, Poppy, man. <laughs> After years of simmering tension between Young Dolph and Yo Gotti, the long-standing feud reached a tragic climax in 2021 when Young Dolph was fatally silenced. However, the bitter irony of fate unfolded further in 2024 when Yo Gotti faced the harrowing loss of his own brother near the very location where Young Dolph was killed. This turn of events has left many pondering the identities of those responsible for the demise of Big Jook. In this video, we will be looking through the eyes of Big Jook's killers the killing of Young Dolph. On November 17, 2022, the rap community was left in disbelief when news broke of a drive-by shooting in Memphis, Tennessee, claiming the life of Adolph Robert Thornton Jr., better known as Young Dolph. The Memphis Police Department confirmed that a male victim had been killed, and preliminary information indicated that it was indeed Young Dolph. As the investigation unfolded, it was revealed that Young Dolph was visiting the South Memphis Bakery, Makita's homemade butter cookies, at the time of the incident. It was a seemingly ordinary day, with Young Dolph going about his business, unaware of the tragedy that awaited him. Attorney Scott Hall, in an interview with NBC News, confirmed that Young Dolph was in Memphis for his annual Thanksgiving giveaway. The artist, who primarily resided in Atlanta, had returned to his hometown to spread joy and give back to the community that had supported him throughout his career. Young Dolph's plan was to head to the Thanksgiving giveaway event after his visit to the cookie store. Little did he know that this would be his last day on Earth, a day that would forever change the lives of his loved ones and fans around the world. Witnesses who were present at the bakery documented the aftermath of the shooting on social media, capturing the chaos and devastation that ensued. The unique and distinguishable camouflaged paint job of Young Dolph's car became a symbol of the tragedy, as fans and onlookers recognized it immediately. Scores of fans gathered outside the bakery, expressing their love and support for the beloved rapper. The air was filled with a sense of loss as the reality of Young Dolph's untimely death began to sink in. In the hours following the shooting, social media became flooded with rumors and speculation. False reports of shootings connected to other Memphis rappers began to circulate, adding to the confusion and fear in the community. However, a Memphis police spokesman confirmed that there was no evidence of shootings at two of the most rumored locations. Amidst the chaos, there was a confirmed shooting in the Orange Mound intersection of Dedrick Avenue and Haines Street near Melrose High School. However, there were no injuries in this incident, and any connection to the shooting of Young Dolph remained unclear. The tragic events surrounding Young Dolph's death prompted Memphis City Councilman J.B. Smiley and Tennessee State Rep. London Lamar to call for a curfew in the city. They referred to reports of additional shootings and expressed concern about the safety of the community. As fears of possible retaliation shootings spread, Memphis Police Department Chief Sarah Lynn C.J. Davis issued an extraordinary advisory to the citizens of the city. She urged everyone to stay home if they did not have to be out and to remain calm as the investigation unfolded. Chief Davis emphasized the commitment of the Memphis Police Department to work with the community to stop the senseless violence. She assured the public that an increased police presence would be provided provided in areas that might be directly impacted by the tragic incident. The motivation behind the shooting remained unknown, leaving the community searching for answers. Chief Davis confirmed that the shooting took place inside the bakery, but did not release any information about a suspect. She urged anyone with information to come forward and call Crime Stoppers, emphasizing the importance of community cooperation in bringing those responsible to justice. The police chief's plea for information was a stark reminder of the toll that gun violence continues to take on Memphis. With approximately 275 homicides in the city in 2021 alone, the community was all too familiar with the devastating impact of such senseless acts. As the investigation into Young Dolph's killing continued, the police department faced another heartbreaking development. Moments after Chief Davis's address, the department posted on Twitter that another slaying had taken place on Lyceum Road near Elvis Presley Boulevard. It was unclear at that time if the two incidents were related. The music and sports world reacted with disbelief and sorrow upon hearing the news of Young Dolph's shooting death. Artists and athletes took to social media to to express their condolences and share their memories of the talented rapper. The loss of Young Dolph was felt deeply, not only in Memphis, but throughout the industry. As the city mourned the loss of one of its own, the impact of Young Dolph's music and his philanthropic efforts became even more apparent. His talent and dedication to his community left an indelible mark on the hearts of those who knew him and those who were touched by his music. APA Agency, in a statement to Variety, expressed their shock and deep sadness over the loss of their dear friend and client. They described Young Dolph as an icon 
Khan, a great man and a beloved artist who was taken from us far too soon. His dedication, drive, hard work, and loyalty to those around him were always evident, and he will be deeply missed. As we reflect on Young Dolph's life and the impact he had on the rap industry, it's important to remember his musical achievements. In 2016, he released his first album, King of Memphis, which showcased his unique style and lyrical prowess. This album catapulted him to success as an independent artist, paving the way for six more albums, including the 2020 hit Rich Slave. But Young Dolph's contributions extended beyond the studio. He was a prominent figure in the Memphis community, known for his philanthropy and dedication to giving back. Every year, he donated turkeys to families in need ahead of Thanksgiving, spreading warmth and joy during the holiday season. Additionally, Young Dolph mentored students at his alma mater, Hamilton High School, inspiring the next generation of artists and leaders. His impact on the community was immeasurable, and his loss will be deeply felt by those whose lives he touched. According to the autopsy report released by the Shelby County Medical Examiner in Tennessee, Young Dolph died from multiple gunshot wounds to the head, neck, and torso. The sheer brutality of the attack is unimaginable, as the report states that he suffered a total of 22 gunshot wounds before succumbing to his injuries. The manner of Young Dolph's death was classified as a homicide, leaving investigators and the rap community searching for answers. The shocking number of gunshot wounds raises questions about the motive behind this senseless act of violence. The loss of Young Dolph has sent shockwaves through the rap community and beyond. His talent, dedication, and impact on the music industry were undeniable. But the autopsy reports remind us of the harsh reality that even the most beloved and talented individuals can fall victim to senseless acts of violence. As we process the details of the autopsy reports, it's important to remember that these are not just numbers and facts. They represent the tragic end of a life cut short, a life filled with dreams, aspirations, and a promising future. Young Dolph's music resonated with millions, his lyrics reflecting the realities of his upbringing and the struggles he faced. His authenticity and raw talent made him a beloved figure in the rap industry, and his loss is deeply felt by his fans and fellow artists. The autopsy reports serve as a stark reminder of the violence that plagues our society and the need for change. It is a call to action to address the root causes of such senseless acts and work towards a safer and more compassionate world. Young Dolph left behind two young children, Trey and Ari, and his longtime partner, Mia J. The family, along with his fans, were left searching for answers and seeking justice for his senseless murder. In the days following the tragic incident, the Memphis Police Department launched an intensive investigation to identify the perpetrator. And on November 24th, a breakthrough occurred. The police named Justin Johnson, a local rapper known by his stage name Straight Drop, as the prime suspect in Young Dolph's murder. Justin Johnson, a 23-year-old Memphis native, quickly became the focus of the investigation. Reports from local media, including Memphis ABC affiliate Watton, revealed that Johnson had a history of violence and was no stranger to the law. Court records revealed that Johnson had been involved in a shooting at the Billy Hardwick Bowling Alley in 2017 when he was just 18 years old. During the incident, he shot three people, injuring two of them. Despite this violent act, Johnson was given a second chance due to his cooperation and lack of prior record. Shelby County Judge Christopher Kraft, who presided over Johnson's trial, explained that they had given him some leniency because of his immediate cooperation and willingness to take responsibility for his actions. Johnson was sentenced to five years in prison, but was released on probation after serving only a few months. However, his probation was later revoked when he faced a federal weapons charge, resulting in additional time behind bars. The Federal Bureau of Prisons confirmed that Johnson was sentenced in the Western District of Tennessee and was released on May 25, 2021 via good conduct time release. But his troubled past did not end there. As the investigation into Young Dolph's murder continued, attention turned to Johnson's alleged Instagram account, known as Straight Drop. The account, with over 50,000 followers, gained significant attention after messages referencing the murder began to surface. On Saturday afternoon, a message was posted on the account's Instagram story stating, turning myself in Monday at 201, I'm innocent. Another message followed saying, I'll be back sooner than you can blink. These cryptic messages left the public wondering about their meaning and who was behind them. The messages raised several questions. Who posted them? Does Johnson have access to the account? And what does 201 refer to? The address to the Shelby County Men's Jail is located at 201 Poplar Avenue in downtown Memphis, but it remains unclear if there is any connection. When asked about the messages, the Memphis Police Department declined to comment, while the Shelby County Sheriff's Office directed inquiries to the U.S. Marshal Service, which has yet to provide a response. The mystery surrounding these messages deepens as the investigation unfolds. The emergence of these messages has sparked intense speculation and curiosity among Young Dolph's fans and the general public. As we delve deeper into this shocking story, we will explore the possible implications of these messages and their connection to the tragic murder of Young Dolph. One man who has been linked to the death of Young Dolph was Yo Gotti, and it had everything to do with their beef. Yo Gotti's links to the death of Young Dolph.
In the world of rap music, rivalries and conflicts are not uncommon. They often fuel the fire of creativity and become a part of an artist's public image. One such feud that has captivated the attention of fans and the industry alike is the ongoing battle between Yo Gotti and Young Dolph. The origins of their dispute can be traced back to 2014 when Young Dolph allegedly rejected an offer to sign with Yo Gotti's record label, CMG. This refusal not only created a rift between the two artists, but also ignited a conflict that would frequently manifest in their music and public announcements. Young Dolph, known for his raw and unapologetic lyrics, saw this feud as an opportunity to establish himself as a force to be reckoned with in the rap game. His debut album, King of Memphis, was interpreted by many as a direct challenge to Yo Gotti, who often used the same moniker. Dolph's rise to prominence and his refusal to back down only fueled the flames of their rivalry. Yo Gotti, on the other hand, saw Dolph's rejection as a personal affront. He believed that Dolph's success was a result of envy and jealousy. As he watched his own star power diminish in the face of Dolph's rising popularity. Gotti, determined to protect his reputation and maintain his position in the industry, responded with diss tracks and public jabs aimed at Dolph. The feud between the two artists escalated to new heights when Black Youngsta, an artist signed to Yo Gotti's CMG label, released a diss track specifically targeting Young Dolph. The track, filled with aggressive and provocative lyrics, further intensified the animosity between the two camps. But it wasn't just the music that fueled this feud. The conflict spilled over into the streets of Memphis where both artists hailed from. Reports emerged of tense encounters and altercations between their respective entourages. In one notable incident, Black Youngsta visited Young Dolph's neighborhood in Memphis, reportedly armed. The tension between the two sides was palpable, and fans eagerly awaited the next move in this high-stakes battle. Despite the intensity of their feud, Young Dolph, in an interview with The Breakfast Club, downplayed the rivalry. He attributed the conflict to misunderstandings and behaviors he found disrespectful, rather than a genuine personal vendetta. Dolph's attempt to defuse the situation added a layer of complexity to the narrative, leaving fans and industry insiders questioning the true nature of their animosity. The feud between Yogati and Young Dolph has been well documented and is a point of interest for many. Their music became a battleground for their grievances, with each artist using their lyrics to take shots at the other. The public was captivated by the drama, eagerly dissecting every line and analyzing every move made by these two rap titans. In the wake of Young Dolph's tragic death, rumors began to circulate, suggesting a potential link between Yogati and the incident. These whispers of Yogati's involvement in Young Dolph's demise sent shockwaves through the music industry and left fans searching for answers. One of the key factors fueling these rumors was the presence of authorities at Yogati's restaurant shortly after the shooting. Speculation ran rampant as to why law enforcement would be visiting Gotti's establishment in the aftermath of such a high-profile crime. However, it is important to note that the motivation behind their visit remains unclear, and it would be premature to draw any definitive conclusions based solely on this observation. Adding fuel to the fire, an old photograph surfaced, showing Yo Gotti's brother alongside the alleged orchestrator of Young Dolph's murder. This photograph became a focal point for those seeking to connect the dots between Gotti and the tragic event. However, it is crucial to approach such evidence with caution. A single photograph does not provide conclusive proof of any involvement or wrongdoing. Despite these rumors, Yo Gotti has categorically denied any connection to Young Dolph's shooting. In a statement released through his representatives, Gotti vehemently refuted any involvement and expressed his condolences to Dolph's family and loved ones. It is important to remember that charges and suspicions should not be mistaken for facts unless corroborated by law enforcement. As the investigation into Young Dolph's death continues, it is crucial to separate fact from fiction. Unfounded rumors can easily spread, tarnishing reputations and perpetuating false narratives. The focus should remain on the evidence and official information provided by law enforcement. It is not uncommon for rivalries in the music industry to be accompanied by rumors and speculation. The intense competition and public scrutiny often give rise to sensational stories that capture the imagination of fans and the media. However, it is essential to approach these rumors with skepticism and rely on verified information. The tragic loss of Young Dolph has left a void in the rap community, and it is natural for fans to seek answers and make sense of the senseless. But it is crucial to remember that jumping to conclusions based on rumors can lead to further harm and misinformation. In the case of Yo Gotti and Young Dolph, their well-documented rivalry has undoubtedly contributed to the rumors surrounding their connection to Dolph's death. However, it is important to separate their artistic feud from the tragic events that unfolded. While their rivalry may have fueled speculation, it does not provide concrete evidence of any wrongdoing. While there is no direct evidence linking Yogati to the killing, there is evidence linking Yogati's brother to the death of Young Dolph, and that is because of his ties to Hernandez Govin. As the investigation into Young Dolph's murder unfolded, the authorities made a breakthrough. Hernandez Govin, a 43-year-old man, was arrested and charged with arranging the killing of the beloved rapper. The arrest of Govin has raised questions
questions about the motive behind the murder and the individuals involved. Hernandez Govan made a brief appearance in Shelby County Criminal Court in Memphis following his arrest. He was indicted on charges including first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder in connection with the killing of young Dolph. The court proceedings revealed that Govan pleaded not guilty to the charges leveled against him. However, the evidence presented by the prosecution paints a different picture. According to the authorities, Govan played a pivotal role in orchestrating the murder of young Dolph. Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy stated in a weekly newsletter that Govan solicited the murder and put it in motion. However, no evidence supporting this statement has been made public, leaving many questions unanswered. The investigation into the motive behind the killing is still ongoing. The public eagerly awaits further details, hoping for answers to the mysteries surrounding young Dolph's tragic death. However, prosecutor Paul Hagerman emphasized that even if they had more information, they would be bound by ethical and legal obligations to confine themselves to what has been made public. Govan's lawyer, Bill Massey, is seeking the prosecution's evidence in the case. Massey anticipates that the trial may not take place until next year due to the substantial amount of evidence and the number of defendants involved. As the legal proceedings unfold, the community grapples with the shocking reality that someone may have orchestrated the murder of a beloved artist. Young Dolph's impact on the music industry and his charitable works in Memphis have only amplified the shock and disbelief surrounding his death. Fast forward to 2024 when Big Juke was shot and killed. It was a day that shook the music industry to its core. On a seemingly ordinary Saturday afternoon, tragedy struck the city of Memphis, leaving behind a trail of shock and sorrow. Anthony Big Juke Mims, the older brother of renowned rapper Yo Gotti, met a tragic end that would send shockwaves through the community. Big Juke, a respected figure in the Memphis rap scene, was attending a funeral service on Winchester Road 6300 block. Dressed in a somber black suit, he joined other family members to pay tribute to his late uncle Eric, a legendary kingpin in the city. Little did Big Juke know that this day of mourning would turn into a day of unimaginable horror. As the funeral service came to an end, a senseless act of violence shattered the peace. Outside the event center and Perignon's restaurant, Big Juke was fatally wounded. His life cut short in a matter of seconds. The news spread like wildfire, leaving fans and the music community in disbelief. Big Juke, a beloved figure known for his contributions to Yo Gotti's music label, Collective Music Group, CMG, was pronounced dead after being rushed to St. Francis Hospital. The aftermath of the shooting was chaotic, with a heavy police presence descending upon the scene. Perignon's restaurant's parking lot and St. Francis Hospital were swarmed with law enforcement officers as they worked tirelessly to piece together the events that led to this senseless tragedy. Memphis police revealed that the incident was captured on video, providing crucial evidence in their investigation. Deputy Police Chief Paul Wright addressed the media in a press conference, expressing their belief that Big Juke may have been the intended target of the suspect. As the investigation unfolded, another victim was discovered, critically injured and airlifted to Regional One Health from St. Francis Hospital. The city was left reeling from the loss of Big Juke, a talented artist and a pillar of the music community. It all began with a car show in North Memphis, a vibrant event that drew in car enthusiasts from all over the city. Among the attendees was Big Juke, a prominent figure known for his larger-than-life persona and undeniable influence. Little did he know that this seemingly innocent car show would set in motion a series of events that would ultimately lead to his tragic demise. The car show was buzzing with excitement as sleek vehicles lined the streets, their engines roaring with power. Big Juke, always one to embrace the thrill of the moment, immersed himself in the vibrant atmosphere. Unbeknownst to him, danger lurked in the shadows waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. As the day progressed, chaos erupted when shots were fired in the direction of Big Juke. Miraculously, he managed to escape unscathed, narrowly avoiding what could have been a fatal encounter. But this was just the beginning of a series of ominous events that would soon unfold. Despite the close call, Big Juke remained undeterred, continuing to move around the city with only one security guard by his side. This decision, though seemingly innocent, would prove to be a fatal mistake. Unbeknownst to Big Juke, his every move was being closely monitored by those with sinister intentions. Days after the car show, Big Juke began receiving chilling messages on his phone, warning him of the impending danger that awaited him. The senders of these messages were careful to conceal their identities, using a bogus email and a text app to avoid detection. The threats grew more explicit, leaving Big Juke questioning how his assailants had obtained his contact information. Troubled by the messages, Big Juke took to social media to express his concerns, sharing cryptic posts that hinted at the danger he sensed closing in on him. Little did he know that these posts would serve as a haunting premonition of the tragedy that awaited him. They don't want to face you, they want to snake you. Stay alert too, 
Stay alive, watch your back at all times. Put snakes on the plate and eat great. Despite the mounting threats and warnings from unknown sources, Big Juke made a fateful decision to attend the funeral of Bovin, a notorious drug dealer. The funeral would become the backdrop for the final act in this tragic tale as the plan to murder Big Juke began to unfold. The funeral of Bovin, a notorious drug dealer, served as the backdrop for the sinister plan to end Big Juke's life. Unbeknownst to him, the location of the funeral had been strategically leaked through flyers and obituaries, ensuring that his presence would not go on noticed by those who sought to harm him. As Big Juke arrived at the funeral, three individuals parked their car at a distance, carefully observing his every move. They had no intention of showing their faces at the funeral. Instead, they patiently waited, biding their time and watching Yogati, who was rumored to be the original target. It's important to note that heavy police presence and tight security surrounded Yogati at the funeral, making it nearly impossible for any harm to come his way. This fact would prove crucial in the events that would unfold later. The assailants knew they couldn't get to Yogati directly, but they had their sights set on Big Juke. Prior to the funeral, Big Juke had received warnings not to attend, but he ignored them, underestimating the danger that awaited him. Unbeknownst to him, his every move had been closely monitored, and his assailants were determined to carry out their sinister plan. After the funeral, a repast was held at a nearby restaurant, a place where friends and family could pay their respects to Bovin. Big Juke, unaware of the danger closing in on him, made his way to the restaurant, unknowingly walking into a trap. As Big Juke and his security guard exited the restaurant, the assailants pulled up, their intentions clear. Chaos erupted as gunfire rang out, causing panic and confusion. Big Juke's security guard valiantly attempted to run back to the car, but was tragically struck down. In a desperate attempt to find safety, Big Juke tried to open the car door, but it was too late. He fell victim to the hail of bullets, losing his life in a senseless act of violence. With their mission accomplished, the assailants quickly fled the scene, leaving behind a lifeless body and a community in shock. The details of their escape remain shrouded in mystery, with some speculating that the cars used were rental vehicles without license plates, making it difficult for authorities to track them down. As the world grappled with the tragic loss of Big Juke, whispers of a connection between him and Hernandez Govin began to circulate. Big Juke, known for his involvement in Yogati's music label, Collective Music Group, CMG, and Hernandez Govin, a name associated with controversy and criminal allegations, seemed to be linked in ways that sent shockwaves through the music industry. Speculations ran rampant, fueled by the historical conflict between Yogati and Young Doll. The tension between the two artists had long been documented, leading some to believe that Big Juke's murder was a retaliatory act in response to Dolph's killing. The area where Big Juke was shot down shares proximity with his brother's Memphis restaurant and the location where young Dolph tragically lost his life. In the aftermath of Dolph's murder, Cornelia Smith and Justin Johnson were charged, while Hernandez Govin faced serious allegations of being the mastermind behind the crime. The connection between Big Juke and Hernandez Govin became even more intriguing when rumors circulated online, suggesting that the two had been seen together. Blogger Vada Fly even made a speculative tweet, adding fuel to the fire of speculation surrounding their alleged involvement in Young Dolph's murder. However, it is important to note that these speculations have not been confirmed by authorities. The police have yet to disclose any information about the suspect or suspects in Big Juke's murder, leaving the public to piece together the puzzle on their own. The shocking twists and turns in this story don't end there. In September 2022, Hernandez Govin's daughter, Lada Cash Desto, also a rapper, was tragically murdered. Some speculate that her death was a retaliatory action in response to young Dolph's murder, further intertwining the lives of these individuals in a web of tragedy. However, it is crucial to approach these speculations with caution as they remain unconfirmed. The truth behind the links between Big Juke and Hernandez Govin, as well as their potential involvement in the events surrounding young Dolph's murder, is still shrouded in mystery. 